Welcome to the examination presentation for music, dance and drama. The subject codes is MD12, MDD12 and SSMD12. My name is Marie van Skalkwijk and I'm your tutor for this subject. On the screen and on the PowerPoint presentation you will find all my contact details. As from 2022, students also can use the Office 365 or the Teams application that you've received to contact me anytime. Let's start with the presentation. This presentation is based on the new study guide that was compiled and written by myself in 2019. It is of extreme importance that you make sure that you are using the new study guide to study for this module. If you use the old study guide, you will have great difficulty in passing this module. If you have not yet received the new study guide, please contact IOL as soon as possible so that they can make a plan. Now, I quickly want to talk to you on how to use a study guide. This presentation has got nothing to do with um, explaining any work to you or explaining any modules to you, but this presentation is here to tell you how to study, how to use your study guide very, very briefly, but then also to tell you what work you need to study for the exam in 2022. Now the study guide, the new study guide that was compiled in 2019 that you have to use was compiled with two purposes in mind. The first purpose was learning and study. So this is to provide the necessary theory and information that you need to study in order to pass both the assignment and the examination for this module. It is to provide learning opportunities to test your understanding and skills of the subject and also to help you engage with the study material. It also contains all the information you need in order to pass the module. So this means that you do not have to resort to use the internet or Google or Wikipedia or anything else in order to pass your assignment. You only need to use your study guide. No outside um, sources are needed. So please make sure when you complete your assignment that you only use the study guide. If you copy and paste from the internet, that's called plagiarism. It's not allowed. Now the second um, purpose of the study guide was to aid you when you start teaching. In other words, it was also compiled for professional use. It gives you a basic overview of the arts. It also provides you with the necessary information that you need in order to teach, to use and to apply each art form in the classroom. It provides practical examples and lesson plans in how to incorporate the arts in other subjects and also on how to teach the arts itself as a subject. Now when you open your new study guide you will find the following information on the first couple of pages. You will see what this entire module is about. You will see how many learning hours you need to complete the module. You will learn about the learning outcomes of the module. You will learn how the module is assessed and you will also find a list of possible verbs that can be used during examination. You will receive information on plagiarism and there's also an index. Now it's very important that you read all of these sections at the beginning of the study guide so that you can understand what to expect, what is expected of you, how you should plan your time, what you will learn, how to learn and where you will find what you have to learn. Now the index which you will find at the start of your study guide is a long list of titles and page numbers. And this, there's also, there's one at the beginning of the study guide and then you will also find an index at the beginning of each new unit. Now the purpose of the index is, in order, is to make it easier for you to find specific information. For example, if you are looking for information on puppetry, you can search for those sections in the index, you will find the page number and then you can look for those information on those specific pages. So you don't have to read the entire guide in order to get the specific information, you just use your index. Using the index will save you time. Now the study guide is compiled out of six units. Unit 1 gives you information on the nature, the use and the application of the arts. In other words, it gives you a bit of a background on what is the arts, how do we use the arts, why is the arts necessary to teach, why do you need to incorporate the arts in both um, junior and senior primary subjects. Um, the arts, always remember, if we refer to the arts, it's not only art, 
it is all the creative and expressive arts. So if you refer to the art, then it comprises of drama, music, dance and art. So always remember that, keep that in mind. Unit 2 focuses on music, Unit 3 focuses on dance, Unit 4 focuses on drama and Unit 5 focuses on performance. Unit 6 is concerned with the national curriculum. Now you will only be asked to study information from Units 1 to 5. It is very important, however, that you read through Unit 6, as I can ask you questions based on the information taken from this unit. When you read through this unit, make sure that you understand how the curriculum works, how it follows on, on um, how the levels follow on, and also what is required. This is very important information for any teacher. However, any questions that are based on Unit 6 will contain all the relevant information needed to answer the question. You need to familiarize yourself with this in order to be able to answer the questions. Now, where should you start? It's very, very important that you think of your study guide as a novel or a book with a beginning, a middle and an end and that you should read or study it as such. Just as you would be lost if you start reading a novel in the middle or only read the ending or only read the first part, you will also be lost if you only read certain sections in your study guide. It is very important that you read the entire study guide so that you understand what this entire module is about. Before you look at the scope of examination or the assignment, take your study guide and read it from the beginning to the end. This will help you to get an overall view of the module and will familiarize you with the layout of the study guide. What this means is that you will have an idea what this module is about and when you have to find information it will be easier to find because you already know how the sections follow on to one to each other. An overall view of the module will help you to better understand this module in its entirety but it will also help you to understand how everything fits together. Familiarity with a study guide will help you to find information quicker and when you do your assignment it will help you to better understand the work that you have to do your assignment on and also later on when you have to study for the exam. Now music, dance and drama are all practical or physical or to-do arts. And although you can go sit and search for information on performances and watch performances for all three, as a teacher you are required to do them and to teach them. Now it's very difficult to comprehend the to do and the to teach part of music, dance and drama if you don't do and teach it while you are reading through the study guide and before you have to study it. If you understand something, always remember, then it's easier to learn and to remember it. Now after you have read the study guide from cover to cover and after you have completed your assignment, you will have a much better understanding of this module. Only at this point, you start looking at the scope that you need to study. Once you have selected the required study material, now you can start, start to study following the three-step method. Now I always propose students use the three-step method to study for music, dance and drama, as this is the method that's proven to, um, yeah, just to help you understand the work, remember the work and study the work the best. Now the three-step method comprises of the following. You have to read, you have to do, and then you have to learn. Now the first one that you do is the reading. The first step is to read the required section. Reading does not mean that you only skim over it, only reading a word here and there, but that you read to understand. This means that if you do see words that you don't understand or certain phrases that you do not understand, that you use a dictionary to explain the word to you or that you ask somebody to explain the section to you. Make sure you understand what you read to the best of your abilities. If you don't understand what you read, then you won't be able to use that information or to apply that information later on. Next, you do. Now the first step is to read the required. Oh, sorry. The next one is to do. Once you have finished reading, you do the section if that's possible. For example, if the section, section is about warm-ups, then do the warm-ups. If it's about improvisation, try improvisations. If it's about singing, sing. 
If you actively do something, it serves three purposes. It helps you to understand the information better, it makes it easier to learn the information, and it makes it easier to remember the information later on. So you might feel silly jumping up and down in your bedroom or singing at the top of your voice, but it will all help you to understand and to learn and to remember. Now the last step of the three step process is to learn. After you have read the section and physically tried to do the section, now you can study the section using your preferred study method. If you are not familiar with different study me methods, it's advisable to look it up on the internet or to ask something, somebody with knowledge about this. If you are using a study method that works in the way that your brain is programmed to learn, it is just a lot easier to study. Now the question paper will always be in the same format. It will contain five main questions dealing with the five main units. The questions will appear in the same order on the exam as it appears in the units on your study guide. And each question will have several sub-questions dealing with the unit. Question 1 counts 30 marks. Now 15 of these marks are multiple choice questions which deals with all five units. This means that there are three questions from each unit in the order in which they appear on the study guide. In other words, the basic introduction to the arts, then music, then dance, then drama, and then performance. The next 15 marks are short answer questions about unit one. Question two is music. This counts 22 marks. All of these questions comes from unit two. And all of these questions thus deals with music. Question three is about the section on dance. This section will count 23 marks and all of the questions will come from unit three. Question four will be about drama. This section will count 23 marks and all of these questions will come from unit four. Question five is on artistic opinion or performance. This will count 22 marks and all of these questions will come from unit five. Now a couple of more tips when you write the exam. Please answer all the questions. You cannot get marks for a blank space. If this is not an online exam, write legibly. If your handwriting cannot be read, you cannot get marks. If this is an online examination, make sure that you do not, that you read through your work, that you eliminate as many typing mistakes as you can. If something doesn't make sense, you cannot get a mark for it. Read your question carefully and read your question more than once to make sure that you understand what you have to do. The verb will tell you how to answer the question. It is very important that you understand the verb. Now, I'm quickly going to give you an example. For example, a verb can tell you to list things. Then you just write down a list of things. If a verb asks you to explain something, you can't just write down a list of things. You have to write down something and explain what it's about. And write down something and explain what it's about. If a verb asks you to critically evaluate, then you have to say if something is true or false or right or wrong and you have to give reasons for your answers and even examples. So do you understand how all of these differ? If you are asked to critically evaluate a new list, you will not get any marks for your question. That's why it's very, very important that you understand the verb. The verb tells you how to answer your question. Now, in order to be able to write the exam, you have to obtain a mark of 50% or higher on your assignment. If, even if you obtain 49% on your assignment, you will not be allowed to write your exam unless you have 50%. Now, in order to pass the module of music, dance and drama, you also have to obtain a mark of 50% or higher in your examination. If you have received 80% for your assignment and 20% for your examination, you will not pass this module. You need at least 50% for your assignment and at least 50% for your examination in order to pass. Now, the next section, is going to deal with the work that you are required to study. You only have to study
these sections for the examination. You have to study these sections for all three examinations. That is whether you write in May or in August or whether you write a supplementary exam. You have to study all of the information contained in here. Now firstly, in Unit 1, which is some basic art perspectives, you need to know what role the arts play in people's culture and lives. Unit 1.1, the role of the arts and people's, people's culture and lives, what you study here is the section, the section on drama and the section on dance. You need to know the importance of the arts as a medium of teaching and learning. How you do this is you study the following three sections. Unit 1.2.1, the importance of music as a medium of teaching and learning. Unit 1.2.2, the importance of drama as a medium of teaching learning. Unit 1.2.3, the importance of dance as a medium of teaching learning. Then you need to know the aims and the benefits of an arts education. For this you study only Unit 1.3.2, the aims and benefits of drama education. Then you need to know about the building blocks of the arts. For this you study the following sections. Unit 1.5, the principles that underpins the arts. Unit 1.5.1, the principles that underpin music performance. Unit 1.5.1.1, the musical elements. Unit 1.5.2.1, the elements of drama performance. Unit 1.5.3, principles that underpin dance. Unit 1.3, no, Unit 1.5.3.1, the elements of drama performance. That's it for Unit 1. Now we're moving over to Unit 2. How to involve learners in singing and playing in percussion instruments. You need to know the basics of music theory. For this you study Unit 2.1 Music Theory. Now very importantly, you can leave out Unit 2.1.2. Why do we need music theory? You do not need to study that section of Unit 2.1. You need to know how to involve young students in melodious activities. For this you study Unit 2.2.1, How to Teach children, children the Value of Music. Unit 2.2.2.1, How to Involve Children in Musical Activities. Unit 2.2.2, Music Appreciation. Unit 2.2.3, How to Teach the Musical Elements. Then you need to know how to conduct singing groups or choirs. For this you study Unit 2.3.1, Basic Warm-up, Unit 2.3.2, The Singing Group or Choir Session, Unit 2.3.2.1, A Basic Singing Group or Choir Session Structure, Unit 2.3.2.2, A Complex section, se session Structure for More Advanced singing, singing Groups, Choirs and Conductors. You need to know how to teach the national anthem and how to pick suitable music for use in a junior, junior or primary, senior primary se se setting. <laughs> Unit 2.4.2, how to teach the national anthem to junior and senior primary learners. Unit 2.4.4, suitable music for use in a junior, junior and senior primary se setting. You need to know how to teach children to use their own bodies as instruments. For this you study, Unit 2.5, how to involve learners in body percussion. You need to know how about natural and fabricated percussion instruments. For this you study Unit 2.5.2.6.2, natural and fabricated percussion instruments. Unit 2.6.2.1, natural percussion instruments. Unit 2.6.2.2, fabricated percussion instruments. Then you need to know how to make your own percussion instruments. And for this you study Unit 2.7, How to Create Homemade Percussion Instruments. If I can just give you a hint here, make them. The instructions are in your study guide, make every single percussion instrument. That way you will never forget the steps that you did because you just remember them. So make them and play them and enjoy them. Then we move on to Unit 3. How to involve learners in dancing activities, including traditional dances. You need to know how the body works. For this you need to study Unit 3.1.2, Muscles. 
Unit 3.1.2.2, the diaphragm. You need to know about motor skills and motor development. For this you need to study Unit 3.2.1, gross motor skills. Unit 3.2.2, fine motor skills. Unit 3.2.3, perceptual motor skills. Unit 3.2.5.2, rhythm. And then you need to know about warm-ups, warming up the body. Body. So for this you need to study Unit 3.3, the warm-up, Unit 3.3.1, the importance of doing a warm-up before dancing, Unit 3.3.2, types of warm-ups, Unit 3.3.4, how to design a cool down. You need to know how to involve students in motor skills activities. For this you study Unit 3.4.1, how to structure a dance class. You need to know how to pick music for these dancing activities and for that you study Unit 3.5.4 How to select music for a dance scenario. You need to know about traditional and contemporary dancing activities. For this you study Unit 3.5.1 The benefits of teaching traditional dance Unit 3.5.2.1 Sub-Saharan African dance Unit 3.5.3.1 what is contemporary dance and why teach it? That's it for Unit 3. Let's move on to Unit 4, how to involve learners in drama activities. You need to study about drama and communication. For this you study Unit 4.2.1, Nonverbal Communication. Number 4.2.2.1, Emotions. Unit 4.2.2.2, Drama games and techniques to explore and act out emotions. Unit 4.2.3 Vocal and Physical Expression. Unit 4.2.3.4 Vocal Expression. Unit 4.2.3.6 Drama games to develop vocal expression. Then you need to know about different drama forms. For this you study Unit 4.3.3 Role Play. Unit 4.3.6, Mime. Unit 4.3.7, Mime Games. You need to know how to structure a drama session. And for this you study Unit 4.4, How to Structure a Drama Session. You need to know about the various performance elements in drama. For this you study Unit 4.7.1, Masks. Unit 4.7.2, Costume. Unit 4.7.3 Props, Unit 4.7.4 Scenery and Set. I just quickly want to give you your usual note. Please make sure that you understand the difference between masks and costumes and props and scenery and set. I'm quickly going to explain the difference to you. Masks is something that you wear over your face. Okay? It's a physical thing that you put on over your face so that you can't see your face. That is a mask. A costume is the clothes that you wear. This can include things like scarves and hats. So the clothes that you wear is the costume. The props is all the physical things that an actor uses. I'm using the mouse, for example, to scroll down on the PowerPoint presentation as I give this to you. The mouse, in other words, the computer mouse, is my prop. It's a physical object that the actor uses. And then scenery and set, that's usually the big immovable things. Like for example, the desk that I'm sitting um, behind or the chair that I'm sitting on. That's part of scenery and set. So please make sure that you understand the difference between these four things. Mask, something that's on the face. Costume is the clothes that you wear. Props is the physical things that the actor uses. And scenery and set, is the big, usually immovable things that is on stage. It's very important that you know the difference between these four things. You need to know about characterization, and for this you study Unit 4.8, Characterization. That's it for Unit 4. Then we're moving on to Unit 5, Artistic Opinion, Drama and Dance Production, and Group Work. Now you need to know about the technical elements of a production. For this, you study Unit 5.4.2.2, Costume Design, and Unit 5.4.2.3, Makeup Design. I quickly want to give you another note. 
Makeup design is not only the physical things that you put on your face that you normally assume with makeup, like mascara or face paint, but makeup also includes wigs. Makeup also includes prosthesis, for example, false nose or false beards or things that you put in your cheek to make you look like a chipmunk. All of these are part of makeup design. And a wig, for example, is part of makeup design. It's not part of your costume. It's not part of your props. It's part of your makeup design. It's very important that you know the difference between all of these elements. You need to know about scheduling. For that you study Unit 5.5 Scheduling. You need to know how to teach learners to work in a group. For that you study Unit 5.6.1 The Importance of Group Works and Unit 5.6.2 How to Teach Learners to Work in a Group. You need to know about Arts Appreciation and for this you study Unit 5.7 Arts Appreciation and Unit 5.7.1 the art critique. You know, need to know how to react to criticism and praise. For this you study Unit 5.7.8.1 Criticism, Unit 5.8.1.1 How to respond to criticism in an appropriate manner and Unit 5.8.2.1 How to respond to praise in an appropriate manner. I want to give you another short note. There's a difference between an art critique and criticism. An art critique is a well-written evaluation of any art form, whether it be a theatre performance, an art piece, a music performance or a dance performance. That is based on four things. You describe what you see, you analyse, you interpret and then you evaluate. That is an art critique. Criticism is when somebody tells you, I really don't like the shoes that you are wearing. I really don't like your art. I really don't like that dance that you did. That is criticism. It's very, very important that you understand the difference between a critique and criticism. Now that concludes the presentation. All the best with your studies.